Uh, so, yeah, I'm Aaron. Uh, oh, it's probably hard to see how you spell my Twitter name on these, but I'm on Twitter at Craze, and you can't spell it correctly. Uh, I work at Elastic. Uh, if you want to know why Elastic cares about observability, talk to me after or find me on the internet. Um, so, you say to yourself, this observability thing, isn't it just monitoring with a different name? Maybe monitoring with better marketing so we can sell you more tools? Uh, well, I mean, you're not wrong. Like, but, I mean, it's, the, it's, you're not wrong, but it's the same as saying cloud is someone else's computer, or serverless still has servers, right? It is technically true, but it misses the reason why we're using a new word. There's a mental shift uh, that's happening here. Uh, does anyone know what this is? It's a lamp stack. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we're not, we're, not writing, we're not striving to write applications right this now, right? We're not writing an application to install on an OS on hardware that if we turn it off, someone's access breaks, right? We're building these complex interconnected service meshes with lots of communication between them. And if we're building complex systems, as we learned, they're all a little bit broken all the time, right? There's lots of things that have to go wrong for them to fail. And our inputs and outputs are no longer linearly related. Uh, so if everything's a little bit broken, but our customers are still having a good time, our system health and our customer experience aren't the same. So monitoring the same things doesn't make any sense. How do we do this? Uh, well, if we've shifted all of our architecture to the left, and we've sort of abstracted and commoditized all of our architecture steps in building, we need to start viewing things from the other side, from the customer perspective. How is that value being delivered to the customer? We care now about service health, not our system health. Because um, again, they've been, their relationship is no longer connected anymore. Uh, you can have all your systems up and running, all your pods are healthy, but nobody's getting to your website. What's going on? Uh, so, right, observability is how we start asking these weird questions. Because we've commoditized all of our architecture, we've sort of solved all these problems like the computer is off or we've run out of memory. They have auto-scaling. So we need to be able to ask arbitrary questions of our systems and discover completely unexpected things that are going wrong there. Um, so these are the three pillars of observability over here, are metrics, logs, and APM. And yeah, I guess if you want to install these three things and not actually change how you go about monitoring your systems, you can say you have an observability now. Um, but it's a bit like saying the three pillars of carpentry are a hammer, a screwdriver, and a saw. Like there's nothing about them that gives you carpentry, just like there's nothing about logs, metrics, and APM that give you observability. They're tools, right? We have to understand how to actually use them so that we can start asking interesting questions about our systems. Um, metrics, for instance, are great for collecting lots of system data in numeric format, like doing interesting things and averaging those and figuring things out, but they don't have a lot of context. Events, like super enriched events, are great for that high cardinality context. Because what's happening now is, if you've got billions of requests and billions of messages that are getting generated whenever someone traverses your system, one in a million is all of the time, right? Like, that's happening all the time. Uh, APM and traces are great for diving deep, like, how does a customer request move through my system? I need a way to actually see what that looks like. Where is it taking too much time? Where is it going from one service to the next? Uh, does anyone use dashboards for actually troubleshooting and debugging still? Uh, these are super static, which is great if you know what problems you're going to have. Really terrible when you have emergent problems. Like dashboards should be something that you can commoditize, build on the fly, and discover new questions. And if we're collecting all this data, it allows us to do really interesting tests in production. Because does anyone's staging environment actually resemble the production traffic that they're getting? Probably not. Um, but if we're using feature flags and canary deploys, which is a different talk, we can start deploying safely in production and testing with real traffic. Um, this isn't to say get rid of your testing team and don't test, like please test your code before it gets to prod. Um, but your QA engineers now can really help you out. Like if you're trying to figure out how do I write an arbitrary test to see how my systems are performing in production, ask a QA engineer. Um, and dashboards aren't all bad either. These are actually really great for other portions of your organization. Like on the far, uh, it's my right, maybe it's your right too, far right side, like really great for OPSEC. They can kind of make decisions about that dashboard. So ultimately, your business doesn't care if your data center is literally on fire as long as you're still delivering the value to them. Right? This is absolutely true. Like Actual CEOs have said, I don't care if my data center is on fire as long as we're still making money. So at the end of the day, we want to measure the value we're actually delivering. And if we can measure that and see how our roles are affecting the value given to our customers, like now also you've got a really good case for why you deserve to get paid what you paid and ask for a raise next time around. So thanks.